Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about arc measure. So first, a few definitions. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is in the center of a circle. This is just like the central angles we used when we went over regular polygons. Next, let's talk about a minor arc. So if the measure of angle ACB is less than 180 degrees, then all the points on circle C that lie within the interior of the angle form a minor arc. So this is an arc with a central angle less than 180 degrees. A major arc is all the points that do not lie in, um, in a minor arc. So it would be an arc with a central angle that is greater than 180 degrees. And then we have a semicircle, which is an arc with endpoints that are the endpoints of the diameter. So an arc with a measure of 180 degrees. So here we are measuring arcs. So we know that the entire circle is 360 degrees. That's all the way around the circumference. Minor arcs, we use uh, just the, whatever the measure of the central angle is. And then major arcs, we do a little bit of math and do 360 minus the minor arc that's not a part of it. So let's give this a try. Um, find the measure of each arc where RT is the diameter of the circle. So first they give us RS. So RS is right here. So as we can see, the central angle is marked for us. It's 110. So the measure of RS is 110 degrees. B asks for RTS. So that's all the way around because it has to go through T. In arcs, the way they're named, they have to go in the order that the letters are. So we can see it goes all the way around the circle except for the 110 piece, uh, arc RS. So to find RTS, we just do 360 minus 110, and that gives us 250 degrees. And then last, RST. Well, they told us that RT was the diameter, so that cuts our circle in half, and so RST has a degree measure of 180. Next are adjacent arcs. Adjacent arcs are just like adjacent lines. They're two arcs of the same circle that have a common endpoint, so two lines that are touching. So in this example, AB and BD are adjacent arcs. And then again, like we have segment addition and angle addition, we also have arc addition. So the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measure of the two arcs. So A, the measure of arc AB plus arc BD is equal to the measure of arc ABD. All right, so now identify the given arc as a major arc, minor arc, or semicircle, and find the measure of the arc. So number one, TQ. So here is TQ. They made it easy for us. We can see our central angle right there is 120. Since 120 is less than 180 degrees, that means TQ is a minor arc. Next is QRT. So here we go, QRT. So as we can see, it's everything but the 120. So we would just do 360 minus 120. That gives us 240. That is obviously larger than 180 degrees. And so QRT is a major arc. Next, TQR, that's going to be 120 plus 60, which adds up to 180. So that means that TQR is a semicircle. Next, QS. Is this arc I've highlighted in green? And now, right now, you might be asking yourself, why did I choose that portion of QS versus the other portion of QS? Anytime you have only two letters in an arc, that means it's a minor arc, and you always go the shortest distance between those two letters. In this case, the shortest distance between those two letters is the bottom portion of our circle. And then to find what the um, measure of QS is, we do 360 minus 80 minus 120. And so this is a minor arc, and it has 160 degrees, or it has a measure of 160 degrees. Next is TS. That one's another easy one. It's 80 degrees. And last, RST. So then RST, we see that we already know that um, TQR is 180, and RST is just the other half of that. So that is. 
So that is a semicircle. Sorry, I must have made a mistake when I was making my slides. So um, since T and R are both um, endpoints of a diameter, because we discovered that whenever we found the measure of T, Q, R, then anything ending in T and R is going to be 180 degrees. So now let's discuss congruency. So we know that congruent circles are circles that have the same radius. If you want congruent arcs, they need two things. First, they have to have the same measure, aka the same central angle. And then second, they must be either in the same circle or in congruent circles. So in the same circle or in two circles that have the same radius. So let's look at the first problem. It says, is CD congruent to EF? Well, so they need two things. First, do they have the same measure? Well, as we can see, both of them have a central angle of 80. So yes, both of them have the same, the same measure. And then second, they're part of the same circle. And so I can say, yes, it's the same circle and same measure. So these two arcs are congruent. Now let's look at the second problem. I need again to check two things. First, does it have the same measure? The answer is yes, because they both have the central angle of 90 degrees. And then second, they must be in the same circle. Well, RS and TU are in different circles. So they are not congruent. So since they are different circles, these two arcs are not congruent. And then last, we have um, MN and PQ. So let's check first, do they have the same measure? Yes, because both have a central angle of 120 degrees. And then second, are they part of the same circle or congruent circles? Well, if we look, this has a radius of 5 and this has a radius of 4. So those two circles are not congruent, so these two arcs are not congruent. Now let's look at section 10.3, applying properties of chords. So theorem 10.3 states that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So congruent chords means congruent arcs and vice versa. So let's look at our first example. It says circle P is congruent to circle Q and that FG is congruent to JK. And the measure of JK, the arc JK, is equal to 80 degrees. They would like for us to find the measure of arc FG. So I'm going to mark my picture. JK is 80 degrees, so I'm going to put that on my picture down there. And we see JK and FG are congruent, so that means that arc JK and arc FG are congruent. So if the measure of JK is 80, then the measure of GF is 80. Now let's try a harder one. It says if the measure of angle of arc AC is 150 degrees, then find AB. Well, AC doesn't have a chord, so it's not like the first example we did where we can just match them and there's the answer. So I'm going to label my picture with a, um, arc AC of a measure of 150, and then AB and AC I can see are both 9. So if they're both 9, that means both of their... Um, corresponding arcs are congruent, so I'm just going to label them both as X. So if you look, we've now labeled all of the parts of the circle, and as we discussed before, a circle adds up to 100, and, I mean, sorry, to 360 degrees. So 2X plus 150 is equal to 360 degrees. This is pretty easy to solve. So I'm going to subtract 150, 2x is equal to 210. When I divide by 2, x is equal to 105 degrees. So that means that the measure of arc AB is 105 degrees. Now, let's talk about bisecting arcs. So use the picture to the right, that's what I'm going to reference. So if arc XY is congruent to arc YZ, then the point Y and any line segment or ray that contains Y bisects arc XYZ. And theorem 10.4, if one chord is, perpendicular, is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first is a diameter. So if one chord is perpendicular to the other, obviously if, if they're perpendicular, one of them is the diameter, use your common sense about which one is going to be the diameter. 
And then theorem, theorem um, 10.5 is the reverse. If a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then that diameter bisects the chord and its arc. And then last, um, theorem 10.6. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if they are equidistant from the center. So what you're really looking for is two perpendicular lines going from the center of the circle to, a, to two different chords in the circle. So let's have a look at our first example. It says find CU. So the first thing you should notice when you look at this is these two perpendicular lines going to chords from the center. And we can see that they've marked these two chords congruent by showing that both of them have a length of 16. So we know these two chords are congruent to each other by the 16s, and they're perpendicular, so that means they're equal distance. So what that means is the two green portions that I've highlighted are equal to each other. So I can say that 2x is equal to 5x minus 9. If I start solving, subtract 5x, negative 3x is equal to negative 9, divide by negative 3, so x is equal to 3. That's actually not what they asked us for. They asked us to find cu, so I just need to plug in 2x, plug the, the 3 in, so 2 times 3, and the length of cu is 3. I mean, excuse me, the length of cu is 6. All right, now, um, our last example is in the figure to the left, so this picture over here, suppose that ST is equal to 32 and that CU and CV are equal to 12. So since CU and CV are equal to 12, that means our two chords are equidistant and perpendicular from the center, and that means that our two chords are congruent. So if ST is equal to 32, then QR is equal to 32. Also, um, if I took the, the perpendicular segment and extended it all the way out, it would be a diameter of the circle. And like we just discussed in theorem 10.5, if you have a diameter perpendicular to a chord, it cuts that chord in half. So if QR was equal to 32, then QU is half of that. It's just 16. All right, now part C is a little bit trickier. They want you to find the radius of the circle. Well, if you look on our picture, we don't have a radius drawn anywhere. So I'm going to redraw our picture down here real tiny. And then add in a radius from C to capital R. And then I'm going to name it little r for radius. If you look, I've just created a right triangle. So all of you should be thinking Pythagorean theorem. So if I label my parts, CU is equal to 12 because they told me so in the problem. And then um, QU and RU are equal to 16. We just figured that out in part B. So now I can use Pythagorean theorem. R squared is equal to 12 squared plus 16 squared. When I stick that in my calculator, R squared is equal to 400. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and R is equal to 20. So that is everything that I have for you tonight. See you on the next video.